Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Watching this uh, here really is an opportunity to really see the differences between uh, the two parties, I, th I think. Um, and I think it highlights really why the Republican philosophy over the last 20 years or so has really failed to uh, get the economy going in any way, shape, or form. And I think in most recent history, we can see that uh, if we compare the Clinton budget, the Clinton plan uh, was a balanced plan, a little bit of revenue being asked from the wealthiest, uh, some pro programmatic cuts, investments into early childhood, into research, into infrastructure, into the things that help grow the economy, a more balanced approach. Uh, as opposed, and we saw 21 million private sector jobs that were created. We saw huge budget surpluses that we had uh, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, 13 years ago. And we saw increases in income in almost in every economic category. All boats were rising. And if we compare that to the conservative approach that President Bush took direct, uh, immediately after that, we only saw 2% growth. We saw the loss of 460,000 jobs, and we saw an explosion in the debt. Now, the wise approach would have been to take the surplus money, pay down the debt, the lockbox that was made fun of so much when Al Gore was campaigning to make sure that we strengthen Social Security, strengthen Medicare, was not adopted. And that's what this amendment is about. And that's what the last few amendments have been about. This balanced approach to help grow the economy. Investments in research, earned income tax credit to make work pay, infrastructure investments, and this particular amendment is about the Pell Grant. $90 billion being cut out of the Pell Grant. When we know that having a college education pays more, and we know that 87% of college graduates in 2012 had a job, as opposed to 64% of high school students. This is a wise investment. We're going to get a great return. And I hear all the time from my friends on the other side of the aisle, I run a business, I run a business, I've run this business, I've run that business, and it's an honorable thing. It's great. It's the, the, you're the artists of democracy and of capitalism in many ways. This is a good business decision. We're going to get money back. This is going to pay off for us uh, as an economy. And now we see that we have $29,000 is the average debt that a college student carries. And that's a burden that prevents that student from buying a house, buying a car, maybe starting their own business, limiting their ability to create more wealth in our economy. So this is a pretty simple amendment that restores the cuts uh, and helps us try to shrink the gap between the wealthiest among us when you have the top 1% income growth going 277% increase and the average person in Youngstown, Ohio, in the middle class has only saw 37% increase since 1979. This is unsustainable. And these investments that we've talked about making in a balanced way are how you grow the economy. Bill Clinton proved it in 1993 with that budget, and it's the way we need to move forward. And these deep cuts are not only going to hurt the people directly, they're going to hurt our economy altogether.